So yesterday, AMD finally released their long-awaited enthusiast graphics cards, the Radeon RX Vega lineup, and I have to say that I'm quite disappointed by the way they turned out. I am just really confused at what the hell the Radeon Technologies group has been doing since the Fiji launch in 2015. So going back to the video I posted earlier, the lineup of the cards has pretty much remained the same, with the addition of a Radeon RX Vega 56 which is a cut down cheaper version of the Vega 10 chip priced at just $399. Out of the entire stack, only this card looks appealing, but I'll talk about why later. The price of the regular edition air-cooled Vega 64 was the same at $499, with the limited edition costing you $100 more, not $50, and the liquid-cooled version will be priced at $699 with no information given about the non-limited edition. Looking at the specs, the reported clock speeds from video cards also turned out to be true. All four cards will have 8GB of HBM2 memory and the same memory bus. The Vega 56, however, will have 3,584 stream processors with a peak compute performance of 10.5 teraflops and a base clock of 1156 MHz and a boost clock of 1471 MHz, while the memory is clocked 145 MHz slower from the full Vega 64 cards. Now as you go up the ranks in this Vega lineup, you can see the TDP figures of the cards increases from a TDP of 210 watts all the way to 345 watts. So obviously efficiency isn't their selling point, and these stats just look a lot worse when compared to Nvidia's cards. Alright, so what about performance? You might think that I'm being a bit harsh here without seeing any third party reviews, and I did say in my last video that we should wait for those, but when AMD's own in-house benchmarks look so goddamn pathetic, it's honestly just gonna go downhill from here. Why? Because regardless of who it is, Nvidia, Intel, or AMD, these guys all show their products in the best case scenario at these events. AMD has been known for cherry picking titles at which their cards perform great in. But take a look at this Battlefield 1 benchmark. At 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, the RX Vega 64 attains an average FPS of 131, 98, and 50, 55 FPS respectively. And the best case scenario being 4K, the RX only has a 34% advantage over the R9 Fury X. AMD's flagship card from two years ago. Let's take a look at Battlefield 1 benchmarks from Tech Power Up showcasing performance with Vega's competitors to put this more into perspective. At 1080p, the 1080 which is the card AMD is targeting with their Vega 64 GPU attains an average of 143 frames per second. At 1440p, the gap between these two cards is closer and at 4K it looks like Vega is in the lead although not by much. This looks underwhelming because I have done benchmarks in the past with an overclocked GTX 1070 that can attain performance that's very comparable to the full Vega 64 which costs higher and consumes a lot more power. And also, like I mentioned earlier, the 1080 Ti has a performance lead of 89% over Nvidia's previous flagship, the 980 Ti. I feel sorry for Fury X owners as this doesn't even look like a compelling upgrade for them. They also showed performance of Doom at ultra-wide 1440p, 3440 by 1440 And Doom is a game which is known for favoring AMD GPUs, so this lead is underwhelming. This also leads us to believe that Vega 64 is going to perform worse in DX11 titles than a 1080. And then they also showed off this weird graph with minimum ranges, and they also included the 980 Ti, which I thought was just laughable. This is why I said in my last video, AMD better show some performance numbers to back it up because in my opinion, these numbers do not make those prices justified. I would have priced the full Vega 64 chip at $399 and the liquid cooled version at $449 or $499 at most. To make them look more attractive as at those prices, they're cheaper than the 1080. The GTX 1080 was launched back in May 27th, 2016. The best AMD were able to offer after 14 months was around 1080 performance, costing the same, and consuming over 50% more power? That's absolutely fucking ridiculous. Especially when you take into account these different architectural changes apparently AMD made. The RX Vega's die size is also 53% larger at 484mm square, where the GP104 is only 314mm square. They're using HBM2 memory, which clearly isn't showing any performance advantages for them in these gaming scenarios. The silicon looks like it's been pushed to its limit in order to compete with a GPU from their competitor, which is actually a mid-range GPU. Because above that, you have GP102 and GP100, which are far above Vega 10 in terms of performance. Vega is basically a Fury X on 14 nanometers with higher clock speeds and no IPC improvements. And that's not even the whole story. The liquid cooled version is the same price as the 1080 Ti, when we know for a fact that it's going to get nowhere near it. Even if you bring FreeSync into the equation, 
these prices still don't look all that attractive. You really can't justify buying that liquid cooled version over the TI because there really aren't any advantages it offers over it. Honestly, after how much they were hyping up Vega with that Drummer Boy trailer, all the press conferences, the infamous poor Volta marketing, where they had the nerve to take shots at their competitor's next big architecture, which will surely blow away anything Vega has to offer, is just insulting. They highly overestimated their product and it misled people into thinking Vega was going to leap over a generation of video cards. Then once the 1080 Ti launched, they went completely silent. The Vega Frontier Edition was probably one of the most bizarre launches they ever did, where they didn't sample it out to any reviewers, like they were really trying to just bury it under the rug. It's been a complete shit show, and AMD's marketing needs to reevaluate the way they're handling these launches. If I'm Nvidia, this launch and those prices aren't bothering me in the slightest. If the best AMD can offer is only just now trading blows with the 1080 or 980 Ti, with worse thermals, worse power consumption figures, then I'd be looking at, Vo at the Volta ro roadmap and rubbing my hands together with satisfaction. If you recall back from January 2017 at CES, AMD had showed off a Doom demo at 4K with RX Vega displaying performance around the 1080. This was 8 months ago with modified VG drivers. Since then, people and fanboys have been running around saying that with optimizations, proper drivers, RX Vega will be significantly faster, that the final card will reach 1080 Ti levels of performance. Well, 8 months later, nothing has changed. So obviously something went wrong. You would think that after all this time since Fiji's launch, with no response to Nvidia's high end last year, that AMD would have something good to put out. The Vega 56 from the entire stack is the only card which looks appealing because it's not as expensive as the rest, is more affordable at $399 and consumes less power, albeit performance at most would put this between a 1070 and 1080, and I strongly believe that an overclocked 1070 would give this card a run for its money. Vega is an architecture that is primarily designed and targeted towards the HPC, data centers and professional market, with gaming and mainstream consumers being a side quest. With the lackluster lineup that RTG released, I feel like Nvidia will bump up the MSRP of the Volta lineup like they did with the jump from Maxwell to Pascal. And it wouldn't hurt them because the competition is so severely lacking in the high end that people really wouldn't have a choice but to go Nvidia. AMD's screw up in the mainstream affects us all. With that said though, I don't think Nvidia would be in any rush to even release Volta soon considering their really high end GPUs are sitting there uncontested. The Fury X at least traded blows with the 980 Ti in some scenarios, near launch. But this time around, AMD released a GPU 14 months after that only competes with GP104, nowhere near the Ti range. Very unfortunate. Poor Volta? Yeah, it really is poor Volta, because poor Volta won't have any competition.